Hello, this is Clement, Chief Architect and Co-Founder of Wavefront, here to talk to you some exciting developments on distributed tracing. So distributed tracing is something that we launched last year, 2018, at AWS reInvent. And obviously, we have been busy working on a host of new features, talking to customers, and actually understanding you know, what people actually need when it comes to distributed tracing. And so we've been hard at work. We've been trying to figure out you know, what we want to be uh, delivering to, uh, in this year's reInvent. And uh, I'm happy to announce that a lot of things, I guess, uh, were dropped um, um, just a couple of weeks ago. And I'm here to talk to you of uh, some of the things that we learned and some of the th changes that we made to the product as a result of that. Right. So just a very quick uh, recap. Um, if you are new to distributed tracing, distributed tracing is a concept whereby you are sending spans right, to some system right, that basically encapsulates time. Right. So every uh, event that you have or every span that you have has a distinct start time, as a distinct end time. They have causality embedded into it because each of the spans are you know, directly related to a parent. Or even in the case for a asynchronous call, you know, it, it basically is a follows from kind of relationship, right? So these are all just spans. And all the spans have a single trace ID that allows you to basically say this is a single trace, right? So that's really the atoms that you're working with. Um, in different systems, you know, you may have you know different ways of, of really representing that or, or the naming convention thereof. But the idea is that whenever you're doing something in computers or you know on the network or doing an external call, making an, an API request, all that kind of stuff, you know, you actually you always kind of have a start time, always kind of have an end time, and each of these spans, you know, have various kind of dimensions attached to them. Uh, the most common one is you have a name of the operation, you know, for HTTP. That could just really be get or post, right? That could be the operation itself. And then you have a host of uh, parameters that you could attach to that. You know, one of the things that we do at Wavefront is we have a language that allows you to manipulate these things. And uh, you could use the builder if you've uh, tried a distributor offering to, to do that, as well as you could use the language. And some of our users have actually um, uh, helped us refine our language to help us you know, do basically very complex selection of spans. So you could actually drill down to the exact trace or spans that you're, you're looking at, right? So that's one of the things that that we did. But one of the learnings that we have is the Wavefront service really is just something that lives in the cloud, if I can draw that. So it really is just a SaaS service that's managed for you. You don't have to update it. You don't, you don't have to scale it. You don't have to patch it. Um, and it's really getting updates uh, constantly all the time. right? And so just like it is metrics, you're sending a single data point per, you know, per second or per minute. You're just sending a spans. right? And so you're kind of uh, freed, if you will, from having to manage any sort of indexing logic, any sort of storage logic, any sort of you know, persistence, uh, authentication, permissioning, all that kind of stuff. That's handled by, by Wavefront for you, and that's something that a lot of customers actually do like. Right? But the question that a lot of uh, customers have asked us is, how do you actually get spans right, in, into Wavefront itself? Right? And that's something that we've worked on um, uh, quite a bit uh, for over the last year or so. If you remember, we do have the metrics um, uh, uh, data format, if you will, that is very closely shared with spans. Right? So you have the name, you have the duration, you have the start time, you have all the dimensions. And especially for spans, you're allowed to send arbitrarily you know, with, uh, or tags with arbitrary cardinality into Wavefront itself. But customers also ask us, you know, what if I today have something that is, you know, in the format that is Zipkin, or maybe I'm using Jaeger, or I just have arbitrary data that that is sitting out somewhere in my log files because, you know, to be uh, quite frank, a lot of tracing information today is actually not transported over a socket or over the network, but rather just in log files. And and they have the same thing where there's a trace ID, there's a span ID, operation names, there's arbitrary tags, there's start time, there's end time. You know, all of that information is there. And so we've worked really hard to make sure that you could actually instrument, you know, any kind of of of, of, um, of uh, systems that you have, right? So today you could actually send Zipkin and Jaeger uh, metrics to the Wavefront, or oh, sorry, spans to the Wavefront proxy itself, and itself can actually understand all of the uh, different formats, obviously including spans itself. And Wavefront proxy will convert all of that information and then send it uh, to Wavefront itself, right? What we have also implemented is uh, the ability for you to automatically instrument, and it's shipping today, uh, Java applications, whereby if you don't have a Zipkin integration or Jaeger integration, or I should have mentioned this earlier, the uh, open tracing implementation, which we have already shipped um, kind of in, uh, at last year's reInvent, um, which is the, in the form of a Wavefront SDKs. 
Um, you could actually ingest, uh, you could actually, sorry, mount to the Java agent on any running JVM or even attach it to a running JVM and have that JVM you know, directly send metrics to the Wavefront proxy itself. So all of that are different ways of actually getting data into, into Wavefront. And I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, you know, you could all even do logs. That require a little bit of work where you probably use either the Go SDK or the Java SDK or the Ruby SDK. And you're basically just taking in log files, trying to figure out, you know, the things that are actually traces, because, um, you know, there are things that are probably, are, are just probably diagnostic or is not actually related to a single request itself. But then you could actually build a single piece, a small piece of tool, um, which is something that we've actually found very common to be necessary. Because if you're, if you're, you know, you have been in this distributed tracing journey, maybe not as uh, vigorously with Open Tracing, Zipkin, or Jaeger, and you just have that in lock files, then you could just write a little bit, a little piece of Go code, for example, and then push all of that data and, and plop it into Wavefront, right? So the other thing that we, uh, so this is just the part of, you know, how do you get data into Wavefront as easy as it can be? The second part is how do you actually make this um, uh, you know, viable in terms of cost, right? And so this is something that we've worked on for, uh, for a bit. And I think a lot of um, customers have told us, like, you know, we're sending probably millions of spans per second into their system. And most of them are actually not being viewed. And the reason for that is because there's actually no value in looking at them because much of the, the spans or much of the tracers are actually benign. And they're, they're actually not worthy of, of taking a look. And that's one of the things where we worked really hard on is to figure out, you know, what are things that are that are relevant to keep in, and this turns out to be a, a relatively complex question because if you're doing any sort of distributed tracing, um, including perhaps you want to trace ins inside AWS X-Ray, for example, or you have something that's instrumented in Jaeger, something in Zipkin, something in Open Tracing. And you know you have something that's automatically instrumented in, in with our JVM agent, let's say, and something is coming in from logs. Everything is kind of you know shoving it at you know uh, the system, which is Wavefront in this case, from very different locations in your in your stack. The traditional approach is to perhaps let's make the the proxy or some piece of logic inside a customer's data data center a little bit smarter. But the problem is that oftentimes a single node or a single processing uh, unit doesn't actually see all of the data to decide whether something is worthy to keep or not. And so we've decided that we would actually put this logic inside Wavefront itself. And so this is something that uh, that we're really proud to announce. It's our int intelligent sampling uh, initiative, which requires no additional lift uh, by by customers today, you're just sending the data into the Wavefront proxy, and you're then sending the data into Wavefront, and we're building this complete picture, you know, all of the request rates per second, uh, all the histograms, all that information that are, you know, that are what we call derived from the, the spans themselves or metricized from the spans themselves, but then also storing just the, the spans or, or just the traces, complete traces um, that are interesting, right? And so we've, um, we've developed a patent pending approach to figuring out how that uh, uh, how the traces should be stored or what sort of traces should we be admitting into the system and so the end result of that is that you, we're storing anywhere between about three to five percent of the traces that are that are ingested into the system and the idea obviously is to make it completely transparent to the user and almost you know uh, a no-op right so w whatever you're doing in the system you know you're always being able to gather some spans you know so we're looking at you know how rare certain things are happening and uh, and whether they're outliers in the system System. And so, you know, for something that's happening relatively frequently with very similar characteristics, we would only be storing them a couple times, right? So, if I were to go here and maybe describe a little bit on what 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 I've been going through so far, so there is a ingestion update that we've done, which is to allow you to basically take data from anywhere, you know, whether it's logs, whether it's Zipkin, Jaeger, Open Tracing, Open Instrumentation, or JVM uh, metrics using agents, and shoving that data into Wavefront. The other part is what we have shipped very recently, which is the intelligent sampling offering, which allows you to really figure out a cost-effective approach to uh, having all of that data available in the system in a relatively quick way, searchable, and whatnot. Right? So 
this, all of this is, is really nice, and we have actually uh, uh, improved the UI quite a bit so that you could actually look at um, these traces in very different uh, 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 perspectives. For example, you could look at just the critical path analysis. You could look at you know, just the, the metrics and just the histograms. And we really uh, recently just launched a histogram visualization uh, widget, which actually is available everywhere in the product. And one of the very unique things that we have in Wavefront is that uh, even though this is just this is distributed tracing, and if you're coming in from perhaps Zipkin or Jaeger, it is actually uh, we're actually creating metrics and histograms out of that data, and at no additional cost uh, to customers. So if you're using our SDKs, if you're using uh, any anywhere in the system that we're automatically creating metrics or histograms, you're not charged for that information. And by the way, that information is also used in our intelligent sampling um, uh, system. So what you get really out of the box is kind of the ability to immediately create alerts, immediately ability to create dashboards and and interactions with the data that uh, that is known and familiar with uh, people who are familiar with Wavefront, the language uh, itself, to manipulate that data. And finally, what we have actually uh, thought about you know, pretty um, hard is the idea that you could actually do RCA or automated RCA inside Wavefront itself. So the idea is that you know, all of this tracing, or all of this, these traces are good. But at the end of the day, we're trying to figure out what is the root cause of something that's happening in the system. right? And so this is a tech preview that we have actually uh, demoed inside reInvent, where we look at all the traces that, that you're sending to us. And at the end of the day, we're trying to figure out, is there a single host, for example, that is the problem? Is there a single JVM that is a problem, maybe a container, maybe a pod? Uh, maybe it's a particular span log, a particular exception that is generated uh, in a particular call that's deep inside the call tree that is the issue. right? And so. We're really trying to help people understand, you know, if I have to explain, for example, if I have a system, and this is uh, purely derived from all of the data that we're ingesting inside, uh, in, ingesting into Wavefront, and again, at no additional cost uh, to customers, if you are having a system where it calls two backends, right? This information is actually perfectly encapsulated in the spans that you're sending to us. And this is just a view, a kind of an aggregate, a kind of visualization of that data into this, what we call an application map. And what that allows you to do is to look at the interactions between different microservices or even things that are external, for example, something like S3, or if you have an inbound call and it's coming in through the web, you know, we could obviously look at those kind of visualizations as well. And this allows you to have an at-a-glance view of what's going on in your system. And one of the, the key things that we are often looking at is what has actually changed. And so this allows, this is a particular mode that we are that we are enabling in, in the system, which you could actually say, you know, why did my error rate increase? Why did my latency increase for this particular service? And the system then goes around and do all of the queries in, in a massively parallel fashion and figure out, you know, what is the root cause to a problem that you have observed in, in your system. And because we have shipped uh, span logs in the last year or so, that's actually also something that we could actually go in and take a look and see, OK, these are uh, these are the spans that we think are erroneous. Let's actually go ahead and pull the span logs and actually try to understand, you know, is there, you know, for example, exceptions information that are available. And the idea is that we would give you these cards of recommendations that may be a good uh, starting point. You know, that's certainly what we are hoping for to achieve in the initial version to tell you, you know, a, a particular service you should be looking at, for example, you know, service A, is really the issue that you should be looking at, or a particular host is the issue, or a particular operation is the issue that you should be that you should be focusing. And that's something that uh, that we are uh, in tech beta right now. Um, you can't really use that immediately if you're on Wavefront today. But we'd love to talk, and we'd love to you know hear what you think about that. the uh, The ultimate goal for us is obviously to to figure out a way such that if you're getting massive amount of ingestion into the system, we are intelligently sampling the data into a way that is cost effective for for users, and ultimately accelerating that whole journey so that you know whether uh, spans or, or or the availability of spans and whatnot it really fades into to the background because you're really just doing your job trying to figure out, you know, is there a problem with the service? Do I have to roll back a release? Is there an exception? Should I talk to an external vendor? And that's something that, you know, we hope we ultimately will help team teams, you know, run their services better and figure out, you know, uh, where problems are occurring and essentially reduce the mean time to resolution um, in this process of uh, enabling distributed tracing for their org. Uh, thank you so much.